you will hear a woman phoning the local council about an abandoned vehicle. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Environmental Health Department, Paul speaking. Oh, hello. Um... I wanted to report a vehicle that's been left parked near where I live. I think it's been abandoned. I wondered if the council could arrange to get it towed away. Have I got through to the right department? Yes, you have. If I could just take a few details. Your name, please. Mrs. Shefford. Thank you. It's not my vehicle, though. I just thought someone ought to report it. No, that's fine. What I need to do is take some details first. Then we can decide what to do about the problem. Oh, I see. So the next thing I need to know is your address. Right, it's 41 Lower Green Street. Yes. Barrowdale. And the postcode's WH45JP. Fine. And if I could just ask for a telephone number. It's 01778 5523 Eight, seven. I'm out quite a lot, but you can just leave a message on the answer phone if you need to. Or I could give you my mobile number. That's all right, don't worry. Now, could you tell me a little more about this vehicle? You say it's been abandoned. Well, it certainly looks like it. Can you give me an idea of where it is? Yes, it's near the main road that goes through Barrowdale. Is that the A69? Yes, that's right. Now, there's the primary school just towards the end of the village, and then next to that, next to the children's playground, there's a field, and it's in there. Oh. I wonder how he got in there. Well, there's a gate to allow farm machinery in and out. I, I thought something ought to be done about it. The children from the school might start playing in the vehicle and lock themselves in or something. Yes. You are quite right to report it. And what type of vehicle are we talking about here? It's a van, actually. You know, the sort with just a couple of little windows at the back. Right. You don't happen to know the make and model, do you? Oh, yes. I went and had a look and got all the details. I thought you might need them. I'm surprised the school hasn't contacted you about it. Anyway, I wrote the details down. Uh, right. It's a Katala, and the models are Flyer 2000. Is that F-L-Y-E-R? That's right. Very good. And the colour? Well, it's not all that easy to see because it's absolutely filthy. And actually, it looks as if it's had a paint job at some stage. It's blue, but you can just see white underneath where it's been scratched. Right. Well, I'll just make a note of the present colour. And if you could just tell me the vehicle number. Did you make a note of that? Oh, yes. It's... S-322-G-E-C. OK. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. And it sounds as if the general condition of the vehicle isn't too good, from what you say. No, it's pretty poor. It wouldn't be drivable. It's got a flat tyre and there's a crack in the windscreen. I reckon someone just wanted to get rid of it. That's usually the way. It's been there for nearly a week. No, it must be eight days. 
I remember it was a Sunday morning when I noticed it. It wasn't there the day before. I walked past it most days on the way to the shops. I'd have thought the school would have reported it. Does the field actually belong to the school? No, it's part of Hill Farm Estate. Right. I'll just make a note of that. And I don't suppose you have any information about who might own the vehicle? No, I've no idea. So what will you do now? Well, we'll come and have a look and see if we can trace the owner. And if we can't, the vehicle will be removed as rapidly as the law permits. It could be anything up to 20 days. One thing I should say, I'm quite sure this doesn't belong to anyone around here. I'd definitely recognise it if it was from someone who lived here. So you don't think it was anyone local? Right. I'd say at a guess we're looking at a stolen vehicle here. I did wonder if it might have been. You hear such a lot about car thieves nowadays. Well, we certainly will be looking into that possibility. Anyway, thank you for contacting us, Mrs. Shefford, and we'll keep you informed of what happens. Right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between an IELTS candidate and an IELTS administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon. I'm applying for a master's programme at the University of Exeter in the UK. I'm planning to register for the IELTS exam at your centre next month. I have some questions I'd like to ask you before I register, if that's OK. Certainly. Would you be taking the academic module? I think so, but I'll have to contact the university just to make sure. You'll probably need the academic because most universities don't accept the general training. And anyway, the procedures to register for the exam are the same for both the general and the academic modules. Good. My first question is whether I sit all parts of the exam on the same day. I don't live here, you see, and for me it would be more convenient to do all the papers on the same day. Hmm. Unfortunately, the speaking part is scheduled for Thursdays and reading, writing and listening tests take place on Saturdays. We can't change the days, I'm afraid. Hmm, that's a pity. Well, never mind. What sort of documents do I need to bring in order to register? You'll have to fill in the IELTS application form and bring an ID, a copy of your ID and two passport-sized photos on a white background. Will any ID do? We only accept original passports and national IDs. That's good to know. Did you say that reading, writing and listening are scheduled for Saturday? That's right. Will I get a break in between the papers? I'm afraid there aren't any breaks between the papers. Each paper takes an hour to complete, so it's three hours straight through. You'll first do listening and then reading, followed by the writing test. This is a standard requirement from Cambridge. 
Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Okay, and how soon after the test can I pick up my results? It takes 13 calendar days for the results to be processed. Can you let me know how much it is and the form of payment? The examination fee is 200 US dollars. You can pay by credit or debit card. We also accept checks. We only accept cash as a form of payment in exceptional circumstances. And one last question. Can I mail you the application documents? Certainly. You can send all the documents by registered mail to our address. 47 Clover Place, New Rochelle, New York. Could you spell New Rochelle for me, please? Certainly. N E W R O C-H-E-L-L-E -E. Could I have the zip code as well? Sure. Our zip code is 10806. Thanks. You can also email us at iinquiry at examsmail.com or phone us at 325- Nine zero eight two. I think that's all. Thank you very much for all the information. Bye. You're welcome. Goodbye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a woman calling Laverton Arts Centre for some information. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Laverton Arts Centre, how can I help you? Hello, I've been to the Arts Centre a few times recently and I understand you have this scheme for regular visitors. The Friends of Laverton Arts Centre? Yes, that's right. I wonder if you could tell me a little about it. I mean, how much it costs and what benefits it offers, things like that. Certainly. Well, first of all, the good news is that we've recently changed the scheme. It used to cost £15 a year, but now it's free. All you have to do is fill in an application form. You can either come to the Arts Centre and do that here, or you can go to our website and apply online. And so what are the benefits of joining? There are actually quite a few. As a friend of Laverton Arts Centre, you'll receive a newsletter every three months with information on all the forthcoming events. That sounds useful. You also get priority booking for shows and concerts in the main theatre. Can you explain how that works exactly? Yes. What that means is that when tickets go on sale, for the first two days, they're only available to friends of the Arts Centre. So as long as you book early, you can make sure you get seats. Great. 
Do you ever offer discounts to friends of the centre? Under the old system, when you had to pay to be a member, we did. Under the new system, there won't be any discounts for shows in the main theatre or films at the art cinema. Having said that, we will be offering some discounts to members for performances in the small theatre. There'll be information about this in each issue of the newsletter. I suppose I can find that information online as well, can I? Absolutely. Actually, we're redoing our website at the moment. Right now, there actually isn't a special section for Friends of the Arts Centre on the website. Once the site's been redesigned, there will be. You'll be able to put in your username and password and enter a special section just for you. It sounds excellent. Are there any requirements, though? I mean, as a member, do I have to do anything? Yes, sorry. I forgot to mention that. There are no formal requirements at all, though obviously we have this scheme to encourage people to attend events here regularly. So, we ask that you attend at least four events a year, whatever they are, if you possibly can. Nobody's going to count, though, and it's totally up to you. That sounds fair enough. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. While you're here, we're actually conducting a short survey of people who phone up the Arts Centre. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? It'll only take a couple of minutes. Sure, no problem. Thanks a lot. So, how many times have you visited Laverton Arts Centre in the last six months? Well, I've only lived in the area for the last four months, so not that many times. Um, three, I suppose. Yes, that's right. Fine. And how did you first find out about the Arts Centre? Let me think. Oh, yes, a friend invited me to a concert and I came with her. Have you ever seen a film at the Arts Cinema here? No, I haven't, to be honest. In fact, until you mentioned it earlier, I didn't realise you even had a cinema. One more question. If we offered a free tour of the Arts Centre, including things such as going backstage to look at the dressing rooms, would you be interested in going on it? Oh, yes, definitely. I think a tour like that would be very interesting. I'd even pay for it. That's great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. OK, I'd like to keep this meeting as brief as possible, as I'm sure we all have things to do. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. 
This is the first of many field trips you'll be going on, so there are a few rules I'd like to make clear now. Most importantly, I want you all to remember that simply because you are leaving the college does not mean that you are not studying. This is an essential part of your course and should be treated as such. There will be two assignments for you to complete whilst you are there and some extension work you will be expected to do over the weekend, so I suggest you all pay attention on the day. Moving on, remember that we are going to a salt marsh and must dress appropriately. High heeled shoes and t-shirts are not what I consider appropriate. You need good footwear, preferably boots, and you should bring a waterproof jacket as the weather is unpredictable. It would also be a good idea to bring a change of clothes. There is a chance you will get wet, and a three hour return journey in damp clothes is nobody's idea of fun. We will be on the marsh from about 10 o'clock to about 4, so you will be given a light lunch. However, if you want to bring any snacks with you, then please feel free to do so, although we will be stopping for dinner on the way home. Now this is the fourth time the college has been to Park Drive Salt Marsh, and so far we have never lost a student. <laughs> However, remember that there are 28 people going, and if you are late, you will be keeping myself and your colleagues waiting, and at that time in the morning you will not find me very forgiving. Please try to arrive a few minutes before seven. If you are not here on the hour, you risk being left behind. For those of you who are being collected in the evening, you can expect to be back here between 8.30 and 9pm. But do warn whoever may be coming for you that the traffic is unpredictable and it may well be later. Before you go, I'll hand out your assignment papers and briefly explain what you have to do. Now, on the first page, all you are required to do is identify the flora and fauna on the page and find an example in the salt marsh. As I told you on Monday, you will need a camera for this. I recommend one of those disposable cameras rather than something more valuable, as the marsh can get very dirty. Now on page 2, you will be looking more at the bird life on the marsh. You should be able to see what you have to do for this assignment, but there will be plenty of time on the way there to ask any other questions. Well, we'll stop there and I'll see you all on Friday morning. Oh, before you go, just a word of caution. The plants are there to be seen and photographed only. Remember that this is a protected site and we will have to get permission for this trip. If there are any problems, we may not be allowed to go again and you will be spoiling the opportunity for other students. OK, if you have any questions, come and see me later today or tomorrow. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.